Hey everybody, I am sorry I haven't been with you guys in quite a while. Um, I had a major loss in the family. My border collie McNabb, Emma Gale's mother, died on us. And this little girl here, she has showed up. Yeah, she's a little McNabb. Um, we had a lot of expense, thousands of dollars trying to save her and the vet screwed up. They screwed up bad. Um, and I appreciate all you guys who helped me. Um, I had to go out on my jobs, a lot of jobs. So if y'all wonder why I've been making videos, what we have out here, um, a lot of you guys probably don't know, um, the world ain't doing too good. And we are going to jack ourselves up from 6,000 watts of solar to uh, 7,000 on the shop and house. Um, I think we're going to actually go uh, 7,500 total, but we're putting in another thousand watts. One of the things I want to do, I want to show you this. Okay. And we're going to come back to that here pretty quick. So stay tuned to that and below the video, everything I'm working with, why I choose what I choose how it's going to save you a ton of money. I'll put links to everything. Y'all know that on my videos, I put links. But I don't like it, the fact that there's these companies out there that they charge you, like for this kind of wire, they just charge you a ridiculous rip-off, screw-you price, and, and, and all of this. I mean, if you bought pigtails, okay, I'll explain more. Stay tuned to this. The kids are working on something right now. So Daniel has a project that he's working on, and he'll explain this. And this is why... We're going to teach some solar stuff today and why he does these. He makes his money doing this. He teach your kids to do stuff, man. Make them independent. All right, so a lot of you guys have regular awnings. They're just fine for shade and whatnot. But, what, but me and my sister have developed what we call the solar panel awning. So it'll be just like your regular awning, but with solar panels. And we prefer to use these little 20-watt panels we get for $18 a panel. Yeah, so well, he he went ahead and took the money he earned off of uh, putting in refrigerators in RVs. There's one, <laughs> and working on he this this kid knows how to repair RV refrigerators. So and everybody in this part of the area knows that. There's going to be a, uh, another video coming out on how you can put in your solar diodes. Yeah, so these are the ones that y'all seen in a previous video, and he bought I don't know like eighty or hundred of them. About and hundred of them. Yes. Hundred of them. So he he spent. He got a bulk price of about sixteen eighties, and now he's turned them into a forty dollar per item because of install. And he uses aluminum. He's he's learning how to TIG weld, and he uses aluminum makes a retractable frame set for RVs, and this allows you to do this on your RV over your windows, each window individually, everywhere. Keeps your RV cooler inside. And makes a couple, two or three hundred watts power. So that's his job, right? Yep. And uh, we we also can do stuff for houses as well. Yeah, and we and he's done forty watt panels. I think it was on a couple of houses. Yeah. What kind? Forty watt panels for the house. Forty watt panels. So he put like 16 40 watt panels on these people's house, two a piece on each window, and wired them along the eave into controllers in the house and put a couple of batteries in people's house. So there's a lot of people out there that are like, wow, that's cool. Easy to do, attractive, and your HOA says you can't put nothing on your roof, you can't put nothing on your walls, but they don't restrict awnings if you have an HOA, which sucks. I don't have one. I live great. That's him over there talking. So, all right, everything below here, look below the video. I'll put what I can, sourcing. Um, the best panels I use... And I'm going to show you these. These are Windy Nations. And the coolest thing that you're going to find out about these things is that, one, they're four bus bar. Four bus bar means any solar angle, they still pick up more power. Now, these are two bus bar, but that's as good as they're going to get for a panel that size. They're not going to waste their money on putting a four bus bar, not even three. So you can have um, six to eight degrees difference in these panels and still produce their premium power rating. Now, the one thing I've learned is, is the Windy Nation panel, it will literally produce on average right at about 96% of its field power rating. So that's its test rating. Over here, these panels over here, these are, make sure I'm not crazy here, grape, 
I think it is grape sore. So they're grape sore. And they'll produce about 90%. So they're not as efficient as the Windy Nation. Oh, and if y'all want to know what her name is, her name is Ida May. Look at her. Isn't she precious? She's nine and a half weeks. All right, over here. Yeah, it's going to be a long time to get used to having her. These are Mighty Max. They're the best panel I have ever found for laying flat. Now, the other uh, company that makes these, I will put the link below to them. Mighty Max panel is under three different brands, okay? And look, my nicotine stain, thank you, uh, Kentucky, for sending me those little nice cigars. I love them. Um, but these Mighty Max panels, they're manufactured by Ultra Solar out of Singapore. They're quality. These are solar lands. They're made out of, I think, uh, Taiwan. Yeah, these are Windy Nations, and believe it or not, these are Q-Cell, and they're manufactured or assembled in Canada. But if you know anything about Q-Cell, Q-Cells come out of Hong Kong. Now, can you say that you can still get Q-Cells out of Hong Kong? For about the next year. That's about it. Now, back over here, we got the rundown. We got the people mad that I talk so long. Let's get over here. All right. Now, we're going to start with a simple process. Solar targeting, April 15th or September 15th. There's your sun. There's your solar targeting. My roof on this shop will be used as an example. All right. Example angle, my roof 3.5 on 12. That gives you 12 inches out, 12 inches of run, three and a half inches of height at that on a level. So if you took a one foot level and you went out on your roof, measured straight down from the end of the level, that would be your roof angle, your roof pitch. Most residential homes, they're typically a four or five on 12. All right, why do I choose April 15th and September 15th as my solar angle targeting? One, during the summertime, you're going to get plenty of power due to the intensity of the sun. During the wintertime, because of the cold of the panel, you're going to get plenty of power. But during the spring and fall, you typically have more clouds, more cloud cover, and more haze than you do in either of these two positions. Now, yes, you got haze in the winter. Yes, you got haze in the summer. We always get mad because those days we want to do things. But more generally, your humidity levels are higher in the spring and the fall. In the winter, you're dry. In the summer, you're dry most of the time. Now, even in a cloudy day on summer, you're going to make more power than you will in a cloudy day in the spring. So you want to target your panel for spring angle. Now, I'll show you the box trick here in just a second. Daniel, grab me that box. Bring it over here. And I'm going to show you how you can figure this angle out on these dates or close to these dates. And he just got me a cardboard box. And I'm just going to take a regular old pair of snips and jab a hole in that box. And you're going to think that's nuts. All right, so let me get over here. And I make a hole. I make a hole in the dead center of the box. So if I threw a cross right there, you see how accurate I am. Sorry about my hand there. If I do a cross right there, that's right about the center of the box. And you want to go ahead and draw that if you can with a ruler and get you a center hole. So there's your hole in the center right there, just like that. All right, now taking a box that's as square as possible, then you'll go inside the box and you're going to draw a line inside the box from your corner to corner points, and you'll find your center, okay? And so say April the 15th comes along, or September 15th, or days on either side of that. You don't have to be dead accurate. You can do it any time of the month of April, any time of the month of September, but it's gonna give you your spring fielding. All right, you tilt the box, just like that. You measure a spot along the box for a foot, and then you'll measure from the flat of the ground, and you'll measure the angle. So say I end up being 5 inches at a foot. So like say I'm 12 inches by 5, like I just showed you on the roof up there. So at 12 by 5, if this out here is 12 inches, and my corner will rest on the ground, I'm going to target it up. Now, that sunbeam will come straight through that small hole, and it'll target in the dead center 
until you get it in the dead center. Once you get it in the dead center, then you're going to measure the distance from that 12 inch line back down to the concrete or the ground or whatever you got it on your slab or your sidewalk and it's going to give you your distance. So what that means is that you be, say it's a 12-6 for your angle to get perfect centering in the September or April. Now with 12-6, if I come over here and my roof is a 3-5, then I need to make up the difference for my panel mathematically to where I end up with so I'm going to go a foot on my panel and find out that I am, say, um, five, uh, five inches or six inches, whatever, here. And that'll be the angle that I'll make. So let me get over here to this panel. And we'll do it this way to where I'll just set it out here on this sawhorse here. Okay. So now the panel's at an angle. And I will grab tape measure. Say I've got a foot out. Mark my panel. Or, or you could mark a board. Watch me be real close to this. Damn near. Okay, so say I'm a foot out. And then what I'll do is I'll just measure down. And if I'm trying to end up with whatever the box showed me. But my roof is already just so high. Say my roof's coming up at this angle. I measure the difference, and that's how much I need to raise the panel up to match my perfect solar. I hope people got that. I hope that made a lot of sense. Now we're going to put this panel back over here, and we're going to go to materials that I use. Now, this material here is called hat metal, furring strip or hat metal. Now, I want to show you this. This piece came out of the basement of a guy's house that was always wet. This area here was always wet. This stuff always rotted out. And this has been in there since 1991. Submerged. Sheetrock on it. Green rock, whatever you call it. All right? Now, we went over there to put a battery bank in, and he says, here's some of that stuff that you're using. Look at the condition. I had a longer piece. See, much longer piece. But I cut a piece off of it to show you guys. This stuff here will last 30 years outside of the sun, even though it gets rained on all. You know, when the sun dries it out instead of being submerged. It's well galvanized. It's very durable. It's 22 gauge. You can get 24 gauge. You can get 18 gauge. You can get numerous kinds. You can get the three quarter high, one inch, inch and a half different sizes. All right. I use this on my roofs, whether I'm using shingles or I'm using metal. If you use a shingle, you want to make sure that you have one inch of your shingle exposure, okay, below where you mount this. And then you will put tar underneath each place you're going to put a screw. So you get your thing and you set up and you mark it for six inch spaces and you'll shoot a roofing screw long enough to get into your wood. Through this, a lot of people will pre-drill it. It's pretty tough stuff. And you'll put roofing tar underneath each one and then just shoot your screws. Now what I do typically is I'll run six inch spacing on the top and I'll run 12 inch spacing on the bottom of these. So in case it allows water any trapped under to get out easy. Now, this is cheap stuff. You could probably go on there and look for, and see that solar companies charge a lot for this uh, mounting equipment, mounting brackets. All right, the second part is, is these pieces right here. This is rafter ties. They're just cheap, they're simple, and they're strong as hell. Nice, thick, heavy metal. And the way that I do these is I literally set them up to where I have two of these that go in side by side and my arrangement is really simple. This part here will go like this until this side touches. You see how that works? And these two ends here will be screwed to the riser I'm about to show you here. 
could I mount my panels on, and you can do yours differently. But if you want, you could even mount them on treated lumber if you want to. They're fine. But this right here is how I mount my panels. So my panel will literally be mounted with screws. I have had these up for, I think the ones on my roof, been up there 10 or 12 years. Not a single spot of problem. So you put the panel of the mount on the panel like that. And then this piece is going to mount on the metal studs. Here we go. Pretty simple. You're going to see more of this. You're going to see the install. And this is a long video, but I want to get it very clear what we're doing. All right. One piece of hat metal, furring strip. Another piece of furring strip. This is the top of the panel. This will be the bottom of the panel. Okay. Using stuff that you could buy at your local uh, sheetrock and metal shops. Standard commercial grade metal studs. These are the 2x6 version. They also have the 2x8 version. They also have the 2x10 version. They also have the 2x4 version. In my case, because of the angle that I'm going for, right there, we're using the 2x6. Just straighten it up there. We're actually going to put ours all together in one shot and mount the hat down on it all at one time. Just like that. It will be one piece. Daniel, grab the other side. And it will set on here like this as one piece with the flange on both sides. And that is what we will screw into and mount to my roof. And then you see that is the rear section that the panels with those rafter ties will go to. So we'll be able to carry this pre-made piece, 12 foot long, that'll handle five 100 watt panels each time, all the way upstairs and put them on, on top of the roof. And we'll put all these on first, and each time we will take these right here and we will mount them on, one this direction, and then for over here on this side, it'll be pretty much the same thing, but one that direction. So you see how it's kind of flipped. So you'll have two of them that will be like this. Just like that. And we'll use the existing holes and just shoot straight through with one screw and two there using just the standard quarter self-starters. And then on the other side of the panel, they'll look a lot more like stand on their own probably but a lot more like that so they'll be like this on one side and we're going to show you a pretty good in depth here in video two there's two videos here we'll show you pretty good in depth how that works these go into the panel on this side these go into the panel on that side screws go through here and go into the panel screws go through here and go into that panel and then they'll they'll literally be just on the panel and you'll walk up and set the panel in place it'll actually hold itself up so it'll be on the panel and it'll screw into here and if you'll notice these little parts right there let that go it'll actually come right down and rest on top of there with your panel screwed into these two holes here and it'll rest on top of there now remember this will be at an angle and that won't hurt nothing but then you can, then you can put numerous screws into here because the panels are much thicker gauge metal here and if there if you use this outer line to put your self tappers through you do not get near the backer that's on the solar panels you don't even get close to them you don't stress the metal at all but you're able to make those connections on here without a problem Let me get that spun around just like that on those lines see if i get that in there now, don't go more than six inches down because you don't want any lifting ability from wind. I have had 114 mile per hour winds here with my panels built this way. Not one loss, not even a loose one. And nine years, blizzards, you name it. Uh, 10 years, I guess now. So if you look at how I'm doing this, you're gonna like that. And that's a quick way you can figure out your solar targeting You've seen that looking at eclipses, you know, trying to do that with a box. Same thing. But 
practically the same thing. But here we go. This is the build we're going to do. And this is the panels we're putting up, the Windy Nation. I prefer them for where I'm putting them at. And below the video is a link to them. Um, it's the cheapest place I know of to get them at. They're kind of hard to get sometimes, but they're the cheapest place. And if you guys live in a motorhome, a bus, a travel trailer, if you're out on the road, if you're finding it hard to buy panels, these are from Walmart. They're Windy Nation, but they go through Walmart. So if you know you're going to be at this next Walmart, order them. They'll show up. You pick them up. They'll open them. No damage. You get them. You're gone. Kind of like that. Not too hard to do. And y'all stay tuned. We're going to show you more. What we're using. How we're using it. This over here. Right, Emma? Is the controllers we're going to be using. 250 amp controllers. We're 500 watts per controller. Yes, I know. That's underrating. But I don't like to push them. And 500 watts per. Why we buy these in bulk like we do. Um, why we use the outdoor cable. This is about 60-70% cheaper than buying the the real genuine so-called solar wire and guess what this is the outdoor low voltage variable out in the open sunlight resistant something dollars a roll this stuff here is for a 250 foot roll it's like 300 bucks so now all these parts below the video sorry it had to be so long been going a while guys y'all be good video two's coming up we're gonna be installing these and showing you the details of how they work.